We give God glory and honor and thanksgiving for every blessing, his manifold grace and his tender mercies and loving kindness. I uh, want to welcome you, Agape, to our, another Agape Love Bible study on our Tuesday evening. Amen. And we're thanking God for his goodness and his mercy. I, I pray that you're feeling blessed and encouraged. And I hope that you have a little bit of the Christmas spirit, because if anyone ought to operate in the spirit of Christmas, it should be those of us, amen, who are Christians, who are saints of the Most High God, who trust in the, the purpose, the coming, the first advent, amen, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we're going to um, pray, and then we're going to go right into the Word of God. Amen. Bow your heads with me. Almighty and eternal God, we come before you. In the righteous name of Jesus, we give you praise for all things and for everything that you've done for us. Now, Lord God Almighty, I pray your blessings on the word today. Holy Spirit, think through my thoughts, speak through my mouth, make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. Anoint the ears of these, your precious people. Let them hear and receive a rhema word, a word in due season. Lord God, I pray that they'll be edified and built up and encouraged. Look on families this evening. Look on wives and husbands and grandparents and great-grandparents and the children and the grandchildren. Look on nephews and nieces and cousins and those essential workers. Look on all of those, Lord God, who are keeping our economy moving forward. We pray that prosperity uh, will come and as your word says, save now, Lord, send prosperity. Many people, Lord God, are needing finances. They're needing food. They want to prepare for the holiday with their children, with their family. I pray your blessings be upon them in the name of Jesus. I pray for healing. Amen. Those who maybe have contacted or contracted COVID-19, that they will completely recover. I thank God for some of my spiritual, my, one of my spiritual sisters who is recovering, even as we speak those things. Amen amen, into existence, that she shall live and not die, and declare the wonderful works of the Lord in the land of the living. And so, God, we glorify you and magnify you, and we thank you for every blessing in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, have your way. We started last week um, just laying the foundation about the prophetic word of the coming of the Christ. We, we spoke, we, we studied in the book of Isaiah, that, amen, that a virgin would conceive and bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Amen. And in Isaiah, the ninth chapter, amen, we, we saw where the king, amen, was going to be born, and a child was going to be born, but the son would be given. Amen. The child would be born, but the son would be given, and the government, amen, and I'm talking about the government of the nation shall be upon his shoulder. And he should be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And surely, real peace will come when the priest, when the Prince of Peace sets up his kingdom. A millennium reign. And that's what he is soon to come. Amen. And we give God glory for that. Well, today we're going to move further in uh, the story of the gospel and in the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So come with me to Luke, the second chapter. Amen. And we, you know, the, you know, the Bible said, come before his presence with thanksgiving, enter to his courts with praise. And I, I love the ministry of the angelic hosts, the choir, amen, singing and praising God. And so in Luke, the second chapter, we're going to start there again. And we're going to start at the first verse. And it said, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus, that all the world should be taxed, or a census, amen. And after this, taxing was first made with Cyrenius, which was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one of them into his own city. So they took a census as well as uh, they had to pay taxes from wherever they came from. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, which means the house of bread. Isn't it fitting that Jesus would be born, amen, in the birthplace of his, uh, of his, which would be actually, amen, when you think that Jesus is called the son of David, but yet he is the God of David. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. And we know that Jesus is the bread of life. And he said, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life in you. So Bethlehem is called the house of bread. Amen. Um, and and so, uh, so they go, and Mary, of course, with him. She was being great, very great with child, soon to give birth. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And most of us women who are mothers, we know how important it is when you're about, when you're in labor, amen, you have to get to where you need to get as soon as possible. And so even though there was no room for them at the end, I, I remember preaching a message years ago, saints, and I know probably some of you preachers have preached it too, make room for the king, amen. When there's no room any place else, you should make room in your heart for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Make room for him. Amen. But we're talking about tonight. The king is born. The king of the universe, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Christ of the living God. And it said, and she brought forth her firstborn and wrapped him in swaddling coals, which was the custom uh, in the Middle East. They would wrap the newborn babies with swaddling coals. They laid him in a manger because there was no room for him, them in the end. Now, you know, I love that. I love all of the Christmas songs. And at the end of our teaching, uh, we're gonna play from our Christmas Glory album, What Child Is This? Amen. So please stick around and listen to the, the end of the broadcast uh, because I think it, it'll bless you. Um, but Away in the Manger is one of the most wonderful Christmas songs that was ever, ever written, amen. And because, you know, and you would think that the king of the universe, the God of all creation, amen, uh, the wealth of the world is in, in the palm of his hand, and yet there was no room for him in the end. He talks about the Psalms that, are, that, that, uh, that all the houses in the land are, are his, a cattle on a thousand hills are his, and yet there was no room for him at his birthplace in the end. Amen. It's kind of ironic when you think about the humility of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, born in a manger, in a feeding trough of man, of, of the cattle. And, and it says, and she brought forth her firstborn, wrapped him in the swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger. Amen. And as we said before, there they had not uh, a sufficient place, but it was the place of God's sufficiency. I'm going to say it again, it may not seem like a sufficient place, but it was the place of God's sufficiency. See, he'll make a way out of nowhere, the old folks used to say. Amen. And he did, indeed, our, our Father and our God made a way, amen, in the midst of no way. And they were in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. They were not there by accident. I submit to you that it was God's purpose and plan before the foundation of the world that the king of shepherds, amen, the king and the shepherd of the sheep, amen, would first be notified, amen, his coming would first be notified by shepherds, amen. I, 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 I think about that. I think that's just marvelous that God would bring the announcements not to the scribes and not to the high priests and, and not to... Uh, uh, those that were had various of uh, the, the publicans or those who had various op occupations, but to the lowly shepherds, the angelic announcement appeared. You know, there's a scripture that says, come before his presence with thanksgiving. Well, I, I, when I think about how the angels, amen, the song of the angels is, a, is about to be sung. And it said, and there were in the same country Shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, an angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord, hallelujah, shone round and about them, and they were sore afraid. Well, I, I guess they would be to see this great sight that the heavens rolled back, and the, an angel, the glory of the Lord, the Shekinah presence of God, amen, was visiting on earth and the angel said unto them fear not for behold i bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people amen all people 
people from the Middle East, Egypt, all over the world, this child that was being born, amen, his birth, his coming, his love, his death and burial and resurrection would change the life of all people that would believe in who he was. And so it says, he shall be. So God so loved the world, for God what? So loved the world that he did what, y'all? He gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. For you, for unto you, is born this day. Hallelujah. I love it when God has an appointed time. In Hebrew, it's called the moed of God. The appointed time. The set time. In the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. The angels knew exactly, amen, his location. As I said last week, location, location, location. He knew his 20. And the star, they call it the star of Bethlehem. And maybe next week I can read that because the Lord gave me a poem about the star of Bethlehem. But it stood right over the birthplace of our king. Amen. What a glorious way to announce the birth of a glorious king. The king of the universe. The God, amen, of the nations. Amen. The God that would change hearts and minds and souls. Amen. Of those that would believe in the son of the living God. And it said, hallelujah. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth good will toward men. I think about Handel's Messiah. And he shall reign forever, forever. Well, I don't know the song that well, but anyway, he shall reign forever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And so uh, it, it, it demonstrates not only God's compassion, but God's thoughts and minds in his heart toward men. Amen. Because again, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. So it is the will of the father for those of us, amen, who have, who have trusted in the uh, in what he did on that cross of Calvary. It was the Father's good will, amen, to give us the kingdom. It is the Father's good will that you and I might be saved. And not only us, but our children, our children's children down to the fourth generation, and even, amen, let nephews and nieces and cousins and co-workers and people that you labor with. It's God's will. It, it's a good thing. It's a good will. Amen. Toward men. And it came to pass as the angel were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, let us now go even into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord have made known unto us. What an awesome privilege these shepherds had. Amen. That the Lord would give that divine information that divine announcement, amen, that an annunciation, amen, that the king of the universe was being born in Bethlehem. What a glorious thing. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, come on and shout glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Glory to God. And then, so they said one to another that they're going and they're going to go and they decided this is something that they were not going to put in a corner, but they were going to go and see, and they would spread the news that a king was born. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying, which was told them concerning this child. As I said, it wasn't done in the corner. They spread the news. Uh, they didn't have emails in those days. They didn't have television. They didn't have radio. Uh, they didn't have the internet. They didn't have any of the tools that we use. But yet, amen, the countryside and all of those, amen, that they came in contact with, they shared the testimony, the witness 
that the king had been born. Hallelujah. The Messiah of Israel had been born. Glory to God. Come on and say glory to God, saints. Hallelujah. Amen. And so they made it known and they spread it abroad. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Amen. They were a moving newspaper. They were a moving billboard. Amen. Sharing the news of the great thing. And, and the thing about the, the, the cosmos declared the glory of the Lord and the birth of a king. The stars in heaven, hallelujah, amen, was written, amen, that a king was born. And the shepherds, now Mary, she kept all these things and pondered them in her heart because she knew what Gabriel had mentioned to her, had made known to her. And as the shepherd returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, and it was told unto them. The shepherds returned, glorifying, praising God, make his praise glorious, hallelujah. And I thought about what it said Mary pondered, because I'm quite sure, like any mother, amen. She's carrying the son of the living God, but yet, like any woman, she's probably, what is all this going to come to? And she pondered these things in her heart. And, and, and women, you know, most of us that are mothers, we know that every time uh, we gave birth, we wondered what would be the purpose of this child's life, what, how, how would this life, this child's life um, evolve and affect others and what will, will they grow up to do and be and how long will they, you know, this just, will they be married, will they have, will I have grandchildren from this child? And so Mary pondered, amen, the divine thing that Gabriel has let her know, he is the Messiah of Israel and she's pondering in her heart. Now I have the actual proof and evidence in my arm. Can you imagine that? Hallelujah. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which in Hebrew means Yeshua, or the Lord has become my salvation. That's what it translates. The Lord has become our salvation. Yeshua, the Lord is our salvation. Glory to God. Which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Gabriel said, you shall call his name Jesus. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opened the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, amen, isn't something how God orchestrates everything? The timing of God is perfect. So never get discouraged in your life when things haven't come to fruition the way you would like them to. And I know in my own life, I, I've been so impatient many times concerning the promises of God, but I know that all the promises of God are yes and amen in him. And I preached on Sunday about the amen in you. And so God's timing is always purpose. It was the fullness of time that he should come. Amen. And that there were people that would come right in his pathway. See, where God guides, he provides. Where there's vision, there's provision. And he will direct you, he will assist you, and he will even direct people that are significant in your life to cross your path. And there's a promise that he made to a man named Simeon. Let's read that. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was, it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost, that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he had the promise within him that God would not let him close his eyes in death until his eyes had laid on, he had his eyes laid on the Messiah of Israel. Isn't it awesome how God will reward you? When God makes a promise, he's a promise keeper. Is that right? His word is forever settled in heaven. He had 
he had ministered that promise to Simeon probably many, many years. But finally, as he grew old and probably was still waiting because he was going to the temple and the Lord had gave him that promise, before your eyes close for the last time on this earth, your eyes will be, you will lay your eyes on the Messiah of Israel. And indeed, that's exactly what happened. He came by the spirit into the temple and his parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law. Then took him up in his arms and he blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou servant depart in peace according to thy word, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Remember, Jesus is for all people. Amen. Hallelujah. Not just for the Jewish people, but for the Gentiles as well. Hallelujah. A, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them. And he said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel, for a sign which shall be spoken against. And yes, he gives her a prophetic word, a prophetic warning. And oftentimes in our life, we want to hear just the good things. But sometimes because God loves you so much, he'll prepare you for some of the things that may be painful. Amen. Because he promised many of the afflictions of the righteous, but he'll deliver us out of them all. And many times when there's a when you're called of God or your life is given to God, it's a sacrifice. There are things that happen that don't seem fair, but nevertheless, there's a grace that will sustain you through that. And indeed, Mary was called a blessed woman and God's grace was extended toward her. And guess what? God's grace is extended towards you too. And so we take the bitter with the sweet, the good with the bad. Amen. And so Simeon gives her this prophetic word. He said, and yes, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. I believe that God was showing Simeon about the crucifixion and the pain, the sword of the pain that would go through Mary's heart when she would see her son being beaten, flogged, pierced through for the redemption of many, through the, that the thoughts of many's heart would be revealed. And not only, you remember, God always has at least two witnesses. He said he never leaves us up out of witnesses. And where there's two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And here, not only did Simeon was summons by a Holy Ghost summons to come to the temple so that his eyes would lay hold to the promise that God made him, but also another witness. And of course, that was Anna, the prophetess. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was great of age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. She was a widow about Four score and four years. So she was 84 years old, which departed not from the temple, but she served God with fastings and prayers night and day. She was sacrificed. She was a sacrifice as well. Sacrificed her life to, 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 to pray and intercede on the behalf of Israel. And I really believe also with the promise of the Messiah coming because she had a Holy Ghost summons. Amen. And there she was. And she coming in at that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to them, to all them that look for redemption in Jerusalem. And when these things, and when they had performed all these things, she's, oh, I'm quite sure being a prophetess, she's prophesying about the glorious thing that's going to come through the life of this, amen, son of the living God, that salvation was going to come, amen. Hallelujah. Come on and say hallelujah with me, saints. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. And when all these things had been performed, according to the law of the Lord, they returned unto Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Amen. You know, what child is this? 
And I, I, I think about that song because, you know, I, just can you just imagine with your sanctified mind what many of the saints, amen, that were around at that time, many of the Jews and, and the shepherds and all of those that would hear of the birth of a Messiah, the King was now on the planet Earth. God with us, Emmanuel, with a plan, a perfect plan that God had from the beginning of the age, from the Genesis where he said, the seed of the woman would bruise the head of Satan, that the redemption of man would be in this man's shed blood. And in all of that, amen, God's purposes had been, had now come to pass. What child is this? Amen. Well, I'm going to ask my daughter. Come on, Dr. Sarah. Amen. Praise God. To put it on, I want you to hear this song. We recorded this album in 2014. David Nutley is the keyboard player, the piano, the, 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 the piano player, the keyboard player. My own daughter, Dr. Sarah Knox, is the drummer, percussionist. And Johanna Rose is the bass player. And we recorded this in 2014 for a Christmas show, a Christmas service at our church. The album is called Christmas Glory. And you can find it under um, gospel jazz because there's a couple of songs that lend themselves to that. But it's a Christmas album. And I hope you enjoy this song. What child is this? The child that was laid in the manger. The child whose life, amen, would sustain us. That he came that he, we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. The, the child that, amen, would not only uh, die for our sins, amen, but would be crucified, hallelujah, amen, and say to the Father, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. But before all of that took place, it would have to start with the little town of Bethlehem. Amen. What is that wonderful song? Oh, little town of Bethlehem. Oh, little town and away in the manger. Those two songs, Christmas songs. But then more than that, what child is this? Hallelujah. I hope you enjoy this song.
little agape. I hope you enjoyed that. Amen. And we thank God for his loving kindness. Let's close in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for the birth of your son. Amen. And as we celebrate Christmas, Lord God, we know it's the light within us that should shine brightly. Because Lord, no matter what we do, amen, we remember you are the reason for the season. Amen. Bless down your precious people. Well, Agape, I love you. Amen. Alumni, I love you, family and friends. Have a God-blessed night. Amen. This evening. And remember, the joy of the Lord is your strength. He is the reason, y'all, for the season. Merry Christmas. <music>